All right, so first of all, thank you for being here. I hope that more people start coming in. But for those who are here, it's great to have you here, number one. So my name is Donovan Green. I'm the author of No Excuses Fitness. I am the personal trainer to Dr. Oz, and also I train right here in town at Oxygen Fitness. So my people's here. My people's there. So, so Rich. So No Excuses Fitness is a program designed to teach people about fitness. It's not about just working out. It's not physical exercise. It's not about doing push-ups. It's not about just doing jumping jacks or squats. It's really about connecting your mind to your body. And when I say that, it goes a little further than just on, on, on just what you see. It's more spiritual. So growing up, I came from Jamaica in 1984 and got to the United States. Lived in the Bronx pretty much all my life. And I got to see and witness so many different things from gangs to violence and just things that could have led me to do the wrong things. But I never did it. And what allowed me to not do it was the fact that I love to focus on the good things. I didn't see the gangs, I didn't see the guns, I didn't see the drugs, I didn't see all the fights, I didn't see any of that. What I started looking at was the trees, the clouds. I started feeling the air. I started recognizing what was around me. So instead of joining gangs, I actually started joining like the boys club, for example. Started studying martial arts. I learned, uh, the first system I learned was Taekwondo. It was excellent. Why? Taught me discipline. Showed me how to focus, how to take my anger and let that anger become something that can resonate goodness. Has anyone ever been angry in this room? Is anyone angry right now? I hope not, but if you are, tell the truth if you are, if you're upset. But I learned how to take anger and let that go to the back of my brain. How do you think I did that? What are some of the things you think I, could, I did to let the anger go to the back of my brain? That is a question. Staying busy. Staying busy, right. So before we go any further, while I'm on stage, it's not just me talking. I believe, I believe in teamwork. I believe in getting everyone involved. So staying busy, that's one of the things I did. I stayed busy. So how did I stay busy? Started learning how to play music, the trombone, the baritone, the trumpet. I played bass clef and started learning a little bit of treble clef. Then I started learning about studio engineer, how to operate DJ tables and mixing boards and how to create sounds that just sounded just perfect for me. Next thing I did was learn how to cut hair. I became a barber. Then after that, I became a carpenter. Then after that, I learned electric, electric, electrical work. Then I became a plumber. So that's a lot of things, right? So how do I have time to focus on anything negative? So I just kept on educating myself. Because when you're spending time learning, you're spending time learning. You don't have room for anything negative. You don't have time to be serious. You don't have time to cry. All you're looking at is starting point, finish point. Am I speaking clearly? OK. So moving forward, after learning all that, I still had a love for fitness. I still loved exercise. I had a big belly, and I had what they call man boobs as a kid. So my aunt used to always tease me, oh, you need to get a training bra. And every time I see her, I have to pull my stomach in and lift my chest up and try to look like I was fit, right? But I wasn't fit because I was a chubby kid. So as time went, I sort of recognized, wait a minute, how can I get rid of this chubby stuff? I don't look good in the mirror. And I was only 13. At 13 years old, I was wondering, how can I get my, my, my body together? And then I realized I had to exercise. That was a no-no. I wanted to do what other kids did, play video games, play freeze tag. I wanted to do stuff like that. And then I got beat up. I got beat up in school. Hi, Kim. I got beat up, and then that was my doorway to start learning how to develop my body and how to get a little stronger. My uncle Duncan, who is now 76 years old, took me into his grasp and said, listen, you have to start working out. And he showed me how to lift weights and how to do push-ups and how to do jumping jacks and how to do all those different things. But that still was not teaching me how to defend myself. How can I avoid getting beat up the next time I go to school? 
So I decided I want to start learning martial arts. My parents couldn't afford to teach me martial arts. So the next thing that I could do was learn on my own. So I started watching TV, Channel 5, every Saturday they had Kung Fu, and I would study just from watching Kung Fu. So I really learned it. I mean, I, I studied. I took a book and started writing notes, watch how they stood, even how they spoke. I didn't understand why they were talking the way they did, because their, their lips were moving, but the voice wasn't matching up to the lip. I just didn't get it. But I started learning, and I decided to start practicing and challenging the other kids who went to martial arts school. And I was beating them. Felt good. Self-taught black belt. So as I got older, I took all of that and embraced everything and started trying to teach my community about proper education. And I'm not talking about mathematics or social network or none of that. I'm talking about proper education in nutrition and in exercise. I'll repeat that again. Proper education in nutrition and in exercise. What do you think proper education in that is? What do you think that is? Proper education in nutrition and exercise. No fads. No fads. Fads, F-A-D-S. Yeah, fads, yeah. Love that. What else? How they work together. How they work together, right. How they connect, right? Intertwine. Proper education, what else? At least two more. I'm watching you. Hmm? How to train your mind. That's what I'm looking for. How to train your mind. One more. I hear the crickets. One more. Proper education. When you think about proper education with nutrition and fitness, we have how to train your mind, how to, how to intertwine them. We have fads. What else? Just one more. Not to be a wrong answer. Motivation. Motivation. Right? So when you look at all those different things, motivation, fads, how to train your mind, and you have all these different things, as a little kid, what business did I have looking at that or trying to find that motivation or trying to learn how to train my mind? What was going in my brain when I, as a kid, a little older than you, how old is she, Pete? Uh, nine. Nine. No. A few years? <laughs> or oh, beef, that's problems. <laughs> a few years older than her, and I was still trying to find a way to better my life, right? And I did. I mean, I learned how to do it. And I learned how to do it really fast. It was either you do the right thing in your life and get the right things back in your life, or you do the bad things in your life and get the bad things back in your life. What sounds better? <laughs> Listen, once again, when I'm speaking, when I'm on the stage, it's not just me. I'm going to get people involved. This is called a community affair. This is not just Donovan Green alone. I'm not talking about myself. I want to involve the crowd, the audience, OK? So, so then my mom, my mom was overweight. And then I used to watch her working out every single day. And I watched her go from being overweight to taking the weight off to changing her attitude to eating properly. Then I watched my brothers getting better. I watched my sister's attitudes change. I watched the whole family attitude change. Then my attitude got even better. And I started realizing how important it was to get everybody around me involved in nutrition and fitness. And what the, uh, the power that you can have when you can take that power and give it to somebody else and say, look, I'm going to give you this education right now, right? And I want to see what you can do with it. If my mom did what she did, working two jobs, busting her butt to take care of all these kids, struggling with bills, blah, 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 then anybody could do it. Anyone. So moving forward, a few years later, I decided to open up a small gym. It was below a barbershop. It was actually a, a fitness studio. I took some of my savings and fixed up the stuff from all the things I learned and put a small studio. And I started to realize that people were gravitating towards the studio. It got to the point to where I couldn't hold enough people there. It was too small. So then I opened up a gym right around the corner. The gym was $5 a day, $20 a month, no contracts, just pay as you go, no pressure. Dr. Oz came, looked at the gym, he says to me, are you sure you want to put a gym in this community? Because it's a low income community. So the chance of keeping a gym open for many years is very, it's very small. I said, you know what? I'm certain. 
I said, it's, it's going to be the people. They're going to determine if the gym stays here or if it don't stay here. So we opened up 2008. And I got to watch police officers, gang members. I got to watch at-home moms. I got to watch principals. Any type of occupation you could think about, these people came into the gym and started working out. But everyone had an excuse. Every single person had an excuse and a reason why they couldn't work out harder, or why they could only make it to the gym once a week, or why they didn't show up a month ago, or why they ate that Twinkie. Everyone had an excuse. Then I started creating this slogan. It's like, no excuses. I had it written on the wall. People would walk in, and I would say, hey, how you doing? Great day today. You ready for your workout? Remember, no excuses, right? They would say, yeah, D, no excuses. And it started to catch on. That, that word, those words, no excuses. So then you saw people coming to the gym more and more and more and more. And you got to see people's bodies beginning to change. Their attitudes began to change. You had different gang members who were enemies on the streets, but good friends in the gym. So fitness started bringing gang members together. Then you see police officers who came in the gym. People that knew them gave them nothing but respect. The guys who came in the gym, their pants had to get pulled up. There was no cursing. There was nothing that will offend my mother. Because if it's going to offend my mother, it's going to offend any other lady that walks in that gym. So their level of respect was amazing to see. So the gym stayed open for three and a half years. Lots of things happened. Lots of people's lives transformed. The, do, the no excuses thing still stayed in their heads. So moving forward, I moved to Connecticut. And I'm skipping a lot, by the way, because we don't have a lot of time. So I moved to Connecticut, and I decided to surround myself around a totally different crowd of people. Because I wanted to see if there was a difference in a poor community, in a richer community, in a black Latino community, in a white community, in a Hispanic Asian community. I want to know if there was a difference in people's behaviors, in their thought processes. If they thought the same way, did money make a difference, having it, not having it? And I realized it really did not make a difference. It had nothing to do with your financial status, nothing to do with your, your skin tone, nothing to do with religion. It was really about your lifestyle. So No Excuses Fitness is really about a lifestyle. It's not a weight loss program, even though it says lose 10 pounds in the front. It's more about supercharging your health. It's about embracing yourself and looking at yourself in the mirror and learning how to love yourself. Many of us don't love ourselves. We walk around with this fake look and fake smiles, and we, we put on a big front. But when you go behind closed doors, it's a totally different story. Your attitude, your demeanor, your posture, your self-awareness, your self-esteem go straight down, the, straight down the drain. The idea is to love yourself and to be who you are. Be yourself. Like, when you see me, this is me all day. I wake up like this every day. I don't wake up with a different attitude. I don't wake up feeling like, oh, I'm so tired. I'm so drained. Oh, God, I have bills to pay. Oh, man, I got to go to work. I don't do any of that because I've got the power to do it. I have the power to walk, the power to see, the power to hear. That's a blessing to me. Are you following me so far? How are you guys feeling? That's like three voices. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling excellent. I'm feeling inspired. I'm feeling empowered. How are you guys feeling? Great. Great. You mean it? Yeah. You sure you mean it? Because you don't sound like you mean it. <laughs> Ask me how I'm feeling. Everybody together, say, Donovan Green, how are you feeling? Yeah. Great. <laughs> does, that, does that sound like, it's, like I mean it? No. No. You have to tell yourself, you're feeling great. You feel fantastic. And you have to say it with meaning. If you don't say it with meaning, then your body, your mind, your soul is going to disconnect immediately. And it doesn't matter your age. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? You feel good? You feel happy? Yeah? You feel good? You feel happy? Karen? Good. Yeah? Beautiful. You see, that's what I want to hear. I want you to speak how you feel. You're, speak it. How do you feel? Yes. How do you feel? Yes, you. You. 
Good. Feel good to see you as well. It's been a while. Yeah. How do you feel? I feel great and interested in what you're saying. Yes, love it. How do you feel? I feel like this is the highlight of my day. Love that. I love you. Did I tell you I love you? How do you feel, sir? Great. How do you feel? I feel great. Little tour from Noel for our class. Oh, I you, you know I love that. I got to give Noel a pound when I see her, too. How, Rich, how you feel, Rich? Good. Love that. How you feel in the back? Me? Both of you in the back. How you feel? Great. 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 How do you feel? Feeling good. How do you feel? Great. How do you feel? I'm happy to be here. I love you. How do you feel? I feel like doing push-ups right now. Drop it right now. Give me five. <laughs> how do you feel? Great. All right. So the idea is to look at your spirit, right? Look at the things that drives you to feeling great every day. You're going to have the, the doodle, the crap that's right there that's taking you out every day. And then you're going to have the flowers. And you're going to have the running water. Do you want to be in the doodle side? The crap, the nasty, yucky, stinky crap. Do you want to have the flowers, the beautiful flowers? And the water? I like the flowers. I like the water. That's what I want to be. So anything that stresses me out, anything that makes me feel like I'm less of a person, I kick it out of here. It's not important. And of course, there are certain things you can't get rid of. People say, oh, God, the stress is really my kids. Or the stress is really my spouse. You can't get rid of that. You can get rid of your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't get rid of your kids. You cannot get rid of your kids, at least legally. You can't do it. That's bad. But when you look at other things that are material, you look at the things that are in your life that is, that is superficial and artificial stuff, those are the things you can get rid of. So I got rid of cable. I think it's nonsense. I was like, why am I paying money for this? That makes no sense. So I got rid of that. It's the only thing I got rid of. Because I don't spend money on a lot of things anyway. I'm like cheap. I'm, 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 I have a lot of Jewish friends, and they say Jews are cheap. So we're Jamaicans. So I'm a Jew making. See? So I'm a mixture of both, both worlds. But the idea about this book, No Excuses Fitness, is to, as you're reading the book, you're going to see that it's like I'm talking to you. You're going to hear my voice. You're going to hear me talking directly to you. And if you think about excuses, I don't have the time to work out. I'm tired. I'm too old. I'm injured. I don't need to work out. I've heard people say exercise is bad for you. I've heard people say exercise makes me gain weight. Right? Those are excuses. And it's nonsense to me. And I don't accept any of them. Like we spoke about earlier, the only excuse I accept is if you're dead. If you're dead, I can't help you. But if you're alive, and if you're breathing, I'm going to destroy your excuses. Even if you're in a wheelchair. I had a lady that was in a wheelchair, huge seminar. She said, I got an excuse. And I could see that she's in a wheelchair. I'm like, what's your excuse? I'm in a wheelchair. I said, come here. So she rolled her chair up to me. I said, you just worked out right there. You just worked out your arms, your legs, your abs. You just worked out every single part of your body. You might not be able to do a squat, but if you can move, if you could do something, there's no excuse. If you're paraplegic and you're crippled from the neck down, you have muscles in your eyeballs. You can blink 100 times and build your orbicularis oculi. That's an actual big muscle. So you see how deep I'm going with this No Excuses program? The idea is it's not just about exercise. It embodies your lifestyle. It embodies your nutrition. It embodies your spiritual belief. It embodies you as a human being. Forget about the wealth. Forget about the, 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 the cars. And forget about the nice houses. Look at yourself. What are you doing to help you? And what are you doing to help other people around you? If you're doing something great to help people, so when you're no longer here, and you pass on to the next time, the next life, you want to leave a legacy. You want to do something that people can say, you know what, I remember when Kim told me X, Y, and Z. And I remember when Ted did this. And I remember when Rich did this. You want to, you want to leave that legacy. It doesn't have to be for 1,000 people. You don't have to be as big as Michael Jackson or as big as Dr. Oz. You can help one person, one family, one kid, maybe a coworker, maybe a boss. Maybe you are a boss. Maybe your boss is a jerk. Or maybe you're the jerky boss. Who knows, right? But the idea is to love, to love.
So here's a drill that I like to do. It might be a little uncomfortable for some of you. However, can you look to the person either next to you or behind you or in front of you and just simply tell the person I love you? You don't have to know them. You see I got a lot of smiles out of you, right? Yeah, it's those simple little exercises that makes us human again. You know, sitting down and looking serious all day, I could look serious all day. I could look so intimidating if I wanted to. I don't want to. I like to smile. People get nervous when I'm smiling. <laughs> Only in New York, though. When I'm in New York, they get nervous. I go on the train, I'm like, hi, everybody. How are you? <laughs> on the train. And they're looking at me like, yo, who is this crazy dude? But when I go down south, and I'm outside, and hey, people are like, hey. The southern hospitality is totally different. But who cares about what people think, right? I don't care what people think. I'm saying hello to you. Hi. Hi, everybody. Can I get a hi back? Hi, everybody. Hi. If you was on a train in New York City, and you saw me come on the train and say hello to everybody, will you say hello to me? Yes. You're lying. You won't say nothing to me. You'd be like, who's this crazy guy? But it's good that you said yes. That's good. Because I'll say hello to you. I know you say hi to me. You probably do some burpees or something. I know. I know. So any questions so far? Does anyone have any questions at all so far? When you get in the elevator, do you say hi to everyone? I say hi to everybody in the elevator, yes. <laughs> elevator is a very confined space, and people get very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I get uncomfortable when it's very quiet. So I, I want to kind of let the air, like, hi, guys. How's everybody doing? Good evening. Good afternoon. Hello. And people will say hello. Right? And I, I, it feels good. It feels great. And then we start conversation in the elevator, too, because, you know, it's a long ride up. <laughs> what were you going to ask? Um, who started in your family first to get everybody on your bandwagon? My mother. Your mother. My mother was the first one that started. And I have a large family. I have family all over the world, actually. But my mom was the first one that actually started because she, she began to watch how my, uh, how my passion was. I, had, I was very passionate with transforming lives and very passionate with changing my physique and looking at myself and just being better. And she got inspired by that as well. So she started doing, I mean, she was doing a lot of things. And I'll tell you real quick about my mom. My mom is still alive, but my mother went through uh, so many different surgeries and died on the surgery table. She died, literally <laughs> flatlined and came back to life. So now she can't do all the running and stuff, and she lived for three years not wanting to be here anymore because all of that that she was used to left. And I gave her like an invisible slap, like <laughs> snap out of it, and I took her and showed her how to work out from the chair. So now she's doing tons and tons and tons of different things, and she's revived again. Her energy is up again. Her attitude is better. Because now she realized, OK, mom, you can't do all that, but you can still do this. So all of her excuses left. Any questions? Any more questions? Feel free to ask me anything. Anything. When did you, as your, you know, your motivation as a kid, when as a child, maybe as a kid started being able to do it, start? You had this motivation to do for you, go, go, be different than everyone else, just be you, you know, be what you liked. And when did that start? Was that just born in you? No, when I got beat up. Uh, yeah, I said it earlier. When I got beat up, that's what really got me to, uh, okay. to kind of realize how weak I was. Uh -huh. I was. I was hurt more internally than I was physically. The guy was like, his name is Abe, too, and I beat him up when I got back to junior high school. I got my revenge. <laughs> but we became good friends still. Mm -hmm. Felt good punching him. And it was play fighting, by the way. It wasn't a real fight. We were wrestling, and I took him down. It was I great. Was I was nine years old. This is about a year when I came back, when I first came to, to the country. And I wasn't speaking, I wasn't speaking like American English. I was speaking Jamaican English. So you couldn't understand what I was saying. So right now, if I start talking like a Jamaican, right, I speak like a Yadi. You're not going to say say. You say say? Right. Like, what the hell did he just say? <laughs> right? So that started a lot of problems. Like, what you said, man? Speak English, bro. I'm like, I'm speaking English. But that inspired me to start changing. Questions? Oh yeah, plateau all the time. Your body, your body's gonna go through changes and it's gonna stay stuck where it's at. 
So how I get past plateaus with exercise, and we, I talk about that in the book as well, is to always change up your routines. You, you can't stay stuck doing the same thing every day. If I give you the same food every single day, I'm talking about the same food, not foods. Food. It just tastes disgusting. I don't want this. So your exercise is the same. You have to change up. You have to variate. Like when, when Rich is working out, I see Rich. And we'll crack jokes about Richard. Richard will come in and say, nah, today I'm just doing, I'm not doing any cardio this month. You just do straight up weight training. And you see him the next month, he's like, yeah, I'm doing cardio. <laughs> no weight training. And I'm going to mix it up. So he mixes it up. Beth, Karen, when they're in class, and Stephanie too, they're in class, it is, it's always different things. We change it up. I don't do the same thing, right? We change the classes up. So the idea is to change your muscles, uh, fool your muscles, trick them. Don't let it get used to anything. So even if you're walking, you have a knee problem, you know what? You're walking, go a little faster or change your route. Change it. Okay? Questions? Can, can you talk about diet and, and what the importance is there? Absolutely. So diet is 80% of the game plan. The reason why I don't say 100% for diet is if I tell somebody it's 100%, yeah, they, they won't do anything else. And, and it will scare them. 100%? So you're telling me I can't have? This, and they can't have that, and they can't, it, it, it will go crazy, they'll, they'll go crazy. So your nutrition, 80%, you should eat as clean as possible. And what's clean? Clean is anything that's grown in the earth. That's clean. I can't, I can't make it any easier than that. If it's grown in the earth, it's pretty much clean. If it's touched by man, it's processed. So we want to minimize the processed foods, and we want to eat as clean as possible. Your fruits, your vegetables, some people can have grains, some people can't have grains if you have those, if you can't tolerate it. You know, your water, those are the, the, the essentials, of course, your legumes. Um, if you are eating 80% of the times and you're clean, that 20%, you can have time to indulge in your junk. Like your junk food, the junk. Because junk and food is two different things. It's either junk or it's food. So everybody knows what I love pretty much. I love my Oreos. I love my Oreos. I eat my Oreos and don't feel guilty about it. Is that once a week or is it like once a month? Once a month. Depending. Uh -huh. And if I'm going to do the whole pack, I'll do it once every three months or something. <laughs> yeah, I buy the whole pack and devour the Oreo. And I'll look at anybody in the face and say that I do that. Why? Because I'm a human being. And I don't want people to think about, you know, oh, this, these people are trying to be perfect. And you see trainers trying to be so perfect. And you see dietitians trying to be so perfect. Well, what do you have? For your, your cheat meal, well, I have uh, kale chips. You're lying. <laughs> you have no kale chips. I just saw you having a piece of yellow cake back there. You're lying. So the idea is for you to embrace your life and to embrace your, your foods. Enjoy your foods. Now, we go crazy when we start to eat every single thing under the sun. And when I hear people say to have a cheat day, when you have a cheat day, you're going to eat anything for the whole day. No, have a cheat meal. That's where the 20% comes in. And your cheat meal should be maybe twice out of a whole entire week. And everything else should be legitimate, healthy, organic foods. If you cannot do organic foods, don't go crazy. Buy certain foods that's organic, like skinned, the, the, the thin skin fruits and vegetables. You want to get those things that are organic. Bananas, grapefruits, orange, all that stuff don't necessarily have to be organic. The skin is very, very, very thick. So all of those chemicals and all that stuff don't get through as easy as it would through a grape or a strawberry. Plus, you don't eat the skin in an orange anyway. At least I don't. Do you? No. You don't? Good. So eat right. Eat clean and eat. Make it fun. Make it fun. If it's not fun, you're going to fail miserably. And don't go on a diet. Yeah, I use, a food, I use a food log sometimes. I use this app, it's called MyFitnessPal. It's a great, great app. And you can, you, can, you can scan your foods in there. You can scan it, it will give you a calorie count, your protein, your carbs, your, your um, fats. And it will give you a track in how many meals you had throughout the day. You can put in your snacks, your dinner, your lunch. And it's a great way to see what your days look like. And sometimes when you do that, it surprises you to see that you had either Way too many calories or way too little calories. So I do, but not all the time.
because it gets very tedious. Very tedious. But I would recommend for you to try that My Fitness Pal. Has anybody ever heard of that app before? Yeah? It, yeah, it's a free app. It's not, it doesn't cost anything. And I, I love it. I absolutely love it. So what do you think about the, all these fitness bands, you know, that the 10,000 steps? It's a machine. They're machines. Machines can't judge. Machines cannot judge human movements. They're, they are gadgets, because we live in a world of gadgets. Everything is a cell phone. Everything is a, the touch of a button. If you, for example, I, before I go to the bands, I go to a treadmill. Treadmills cost, what, $6,000, $8,000 and up, right? When you're buying the commercial grade treadmills, they say, oh, you can count how many calories you burn. You have the TV on it and all that. If you've got to watch TV when you're on a treadmill, then you just stay home. Go on the treadmill in your house. But if I turn the treadmill on and just let the belt run, it's going to still say that 300 calories were burnt, 400 calories burnt. So they got slick and started saying, well, input your age, input your height, input your weight. The treadmill cannot tell you how many calories you actually burn. The fuel bands, the same thing. They don't count hip movements. So if you're walking, the only way the fuel band works is when your arms are actually moving as well. So what if you're walking and you do this for a few seconds? It doesn't count it. But it's still a good way to at least estimate what your days are like. But don't depend on those things, though. Don't depend on them. What about a heart monitor? Is that, I mean, is that heart monitors are good. Not? Yeah, because a heart monitor really checks your pulse. Mm -hmm. See, when you have the sensor, and it's hitting against that sensor mm -hmm. through your pulse, it really checks your pulse. A good heart monitor. Those are good, yeah. Those are good, but not the calorie stuff. To burn calories, to know how many calories you burn, you have to go into a scientific laboratory. And they have to strap you up and do the VO2 maximum oxygen intake test and put this mask in your face and put all these things and stick on you to see what your heart rate is like. And that's how you know how many calories you could actually burn mm -hmm. in a 20 minute workout or a 30 minute workout or an hour workout. Mm -hmm. Can I answer the question? The um, probiotic diet. Mm -hmm. Once again, the word diet. <laughs> Not big in any diets. I don't care what or how effective they may sound. Probiotics in general are great for your digestion, good for your intestines, mm -hmm. especially if you're doing antibiotics. Probiotics are known to be great for that. And if you are doing any type of probiotics, it has to be at least 25 billion live enzymes in that and more. But if there's a diet in the end of it, the word diet, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> just, cut it out of, just cut it out of the brain. Because diets are very temporary. What you want to adapt is a lifestyle. Lifestyle is very different from a diet. You go on a diet, it's what? Take, take this much pounds off in this many days, right? Or this many months, or whatever it is. And you do it, and you get to that point, or you don't get to that point. You either get stressed out that you didn't take the weight off properly, or you get happy that you took the weight off, and you go back to doing what you did in the first place. So your digestion. Start to take things that are great for digestion and great for inflammation. Like ginger, for one, is really good for digestion, good for inflammation. The beets, red beets. Excellent for your blood. Excellent source for your blood. That's, I call that the blood of the earth. If vampires were really here, I would just give them beets all day. <laughs> you don't got to eat me. Just I'll make you a beet juice, right? Lemons, great, great to have in the morning. With room temperature water, it helps your digestion once again. So many of us, health-wise, have issues with digestion. We do not digest our foods properly because we don't eat our foods. We swallow our foods in the United States. We swallow. You go to Europe, you go to Jamaica, where I'm from, we eat our foods. We sit down and actually talk. I see people eat, swallow, checking Facebook, Instagram, oh God, all the stock now. Right, so to digest your foods, you have to eat slowly. In integrative nutrition, right? That's the school I went to. They be believe it or not, they recommend to chew your foods at least 100 times. You say that in the United States, like, what? 100 times? It's crazy. But you chew your food at least 100 times. Why do you do that? It gives your liver, your kidney, it gives your small intestines and your large intestines time to heal and time 
to recoup from all the damage that you do to it every single day. See me smiling? I know you're not going to do it 100 times. I know you're not. But the idea is to eat slow. Eat slow. It takes your brain 30 minutes, roughly, to know if it's full, to know that your body is full or not. So sometimes we eat, 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 eat. And when you're done, you're like, damn, I feel bloated. I feel bad. Like I ate too much. Yeah, you did eat too much. Put portions together, small portions, and eat, and stop eating just when you feel like you're good. Don't force eat. Small portions at a time. Anyone with questions? So you learned about kind of gas and learned about the importance of chemistry of the cell. Uh, can you explain more about it? Do you think vitamins and vitamins? Where is integrative nutrition? Where is the place you studied? Well, that? integrative nutrition is in New York. Yeah. When I went, they were in the city. Now it's just online. Okay. And Dr. Oz went there too. Yeah, Dr. Oz went there as well. Oh, okay. It's a great program. So what, what I love about integrative nutrition is it represents what I do. I'm not a fan of anything. Nothing. If you're a vegan, great. If you eat meat, great. If you're vegetarian, great. Right? Mm -hmm. So you, you know, the idea of integrative nutrition is the word to integrate. So you're taking things from different practices and you're implementing that into your own habit. What works for you? So you had a guy that one of the professors came up, he owned a cattle farm, and he became a vegan. <laughs> you understand? And then you had a, a, another gentleman who he was a vegan and started to eat meat. And everyone has different arguments that makes you say, that makes sense. Different arguments that will make you think like, you know what, that makes sense. So you just have to find what works for you. It gets very confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you what, what is wrong. To me, what is wrong and I don't, is, is the processed foods. Processed foods, to me, is wrong because of the amount of chemicals, and the amount of just the things they put in processed foods, it's not designed for your body to digest that. Your stomach is like, what are you doing to me? <laughs> it's like you're bench pressing, and I give you, I say, Beth, here, take this 100-pound dumbbell, and I want you to bench press that. Your brain sees it, so you're like, no, I can't do that. can't do that. Your stomach is doing that same thing. You're crushing, crushing, and crushing, and crushing your body. And every single year, you get sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker. How many of us had family members or friends who died before that we know people that passed away? Pretty much all of us, right? How many of us know people that passed away through natural death? Right, I know a few. Only a handful. My grandmother did. She died at 102. Wow. She ate only earth foods. But almost everyone you know that passed away died prematurely. They died of some type of illness, some type of cancer, some type of something. It's just something that was wrong with their bodies that just took them out. Because everywhere you look is process, it's chemicals. There are things that just damages our entire structure. And is anyone thinking a little deeper right now? Because I'm thinking a little deeper right now. The lights cause cancer. Fluorescent lights cause cancer. Somebody with lupus, they say don't go underneath fluorescent lights. Everything is fluorescent lights. Those normal, those nice hot bulbs that burn electricity, those were much better than these lights. Your cell phones cause cancer. Everything that we do damages us. So how do you go and prepare your body to be healthy again? How do you supercharge your health again? You start doing it. You start doing the things that feels right to your spirit what feels good to your spirit. So, how many people here eat meat? Pretty much everyone, okay, that's fine. So, there's nothing wrong with eating meat, but your body digests steak, it can take up to 72 hours sometimes to digest that. So if you have a steak on a Monday, and you have a piece of steak on a Tuesday, and a piece of steak on a Wednesday, and then have some pork on a Thursday, your stomach, basically became a pet cemetery, basically. Because now you have the cow on top of the cow on top of the cow. You got the pig just chilling, oink, oink. And the cow's like, move over, right? You're not giving your body enough time to digest the foods. You're not giving it enough time. So what happens is now your liver and your kidney, all these things are fighting to digest it. Don't digest it. 
So all of that bad vibe that the animal had in it is in your system. The toxins, the, 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 the anger of how the animal was slaughtered is in your system. You become that, that disease, whatever the animal had. It's in your blood. Your body is not getting it out fast enough. So what do you think happens to it? If your body can't get rid of it, what does your body do? It absorbs it, right. It goes right into your blood system. And it stores as fat, unnecessary fat, where the fat begins to add up. Men, we tend to get a lot of gut here. We get a lot of low belly stuff. Women get it all over, all over. Men are different because men have more muscle mass. So a guy could, I've seen husband and wives working out together, and I've seen the husband surpass the wife, just <laughs> doing a little simple stuff. And the wife is busting her butt in the gym, and she's like, I'm not getting no results. Men and women are different. We're different. Men have more mass. We burn more calories. It's faster. We, we just, I don't know, we just do it faster. However, that's just the, the look. But what about the inside? What about inside? What's the health like going on inside? How many people take vitamins every day? Beautiful, right? Are you taking vitamins because your doctor said to take vitamins? Or are you doing it because you, you're doing it? Is anybody taking it because of the doctor or just doing it because they want to do it? Because of the doctor, right? Was there a deficiency that you have, if you mind me asking? D? D. D, yeah. A lot of people are deficient in vitamin D. Yeah, to see, to see how, how deficient you are in vitamin D. The, the thing about it is to know your health. And you won't know your health until you, until you start visiting your doctors more and more. Know what's going on with your blood. Know what you're deficient in. Know what you need. Know what you don't need. They have some people who's taking vitamin C and has, they have a high dose of vitamin C already in their body. So they're taking extra vitamins for no reason. So I like that he said that he's taking vitamin D. The doctors told him this. So now he knows that he's aware that I need to have some vitamin D in my body. But many of us are doing it and don't know why we're doing it. Multivitamins too. They say take a multi every day. It's okay to take multis, but find out what you are deficient in, what you need, and find out what you don't need. Iron too. You can have too much iron and get constipated. Too much iron, you'll be in the bathroom for a couple of days. Like, wait a minute, what's happening? There's nothing happening. Nothing at all. If you go into the bathroom, and I'm not afraid to talk about that. You guys know that. I'm afraid to talk about doodling. We all do it. We all go to the bathroom, take a number two, number one. If you're not taking a number two enough times throughout the week, if you go to the bathroom once or twice a week, then you are constipated. That means you have all of this stuff just bubbling in your body, and you're not getting rid of it. That means you either need to increase your water, you need to increase your fiber, Maybe you need to see a doctor for some more stuff and see what they can do, what they can help you with. But you should be going to that bathroom at least twice a day. Me, when I first came to America, I was not afraid to go to the bathroom. And I'm still not afraid. But I realized in the United States, people are shy to say they got to go to the bathroom. They will hold it. They will hold it until they get home two hours, three hours later before they go to the bathroom. Not I, said Donovan. When I eat something, 20 minutes later, the most, I'm off to that bathroom. That's it. I'm not afraid. Come out and say, guys, don't go in there for about two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. Let it air out for a little bit, and then go back inside. Not afraid, because it's our human nature to get rid of waste. The more waste you get rid of, the cleaner your body becomes. Am I clicking anything? Is anyone thinking about anything? Am I touching anything properly? Is anyone thinking about doodling right now? <laughs> so to wrap things up, I know we have a what time is it? Oh, we got some time. To let you kind of hear from my world and what I see and what I've seen and what I've done and all the things, I will tell you, I'm extremely happy to say that I have a track record of doing nothing but good. I have an excellent track record of doing nothing but good. In my book, I have a gentleman I talk about. His name is Diamond. His real name is Daniel Robinson. He did 15 years in jail. And when I first met him, he was very ignorant. He was, is 6'5 and 260-something pounds of raw muscle. He makes me look like a little shrimp. And he wanted to beat up a barber because the barber cut his hair way too low. And 
I came up as nice as I could, and I asked him what happened. He got mad at me too. Make a long story short, because you will read about it in the book, he and I became great friends. I started teaching him how to take his anger and redirect his anger on the weights. He loves weight training, so hey, go lift some weights. When you get mad, take a deep breath. <gasps> Exhale, drop, do some push-ups. Do something that could take your mind away from the negativity. To this very day, he's now doing what I'm doing. He's on stage, talking to kids, talking about his experiences, talking about what got him to go to jail, talking about his attitude, and he talks about me. Because I'm the guy that saved his life. I'm the one that sat down with five members of a very bad situation, five of them, and I begged for his life. I told him, give me one year, just one year, with him. And I hired him. He became a trainer in my gym for one full year. To those same people that wanted to do, thing, do things to him, they're now friends with him. So when you change your attitude and you begin to change your persona and you, how you let out your energy, people will change along with you. If I came up here right now and I was speaking to you as ignorant as possible and I was walking around like this talking to you and I was being aggressive, would that attract you? Yeah. No. So why do we have to have bad attitudes when we're outside? If somebody cut you off in front of your car, why do you get mad? If you're driving somebody and says, and stop suddenly in front of you, no accident happened, why do you get mad? No reason. There's no reason because your blood pressure goes up and you, you bring yourself closer to dying at a younger age. That stress is unnecessary. If there's something stressing you, you breathe. You take a deep breath in and deep breath out. It works. Let's try it. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And just do a few more. Just do a couple more breaths. A few more breaths. In and out. One more breath. In and out. Breathe. Yeah. Reminder that you're alive. Reminder that nothing matters except you at the end of the day. Do you do yoga? Yes. How I does do. that fit into the scheme of fit, physical fitness? It's movement. Physical fitness is anything that has to do with movements. Me doing this is fit. I think I burnt like maybe 700 calories walking back and forth up here. <laughs> I'm always working. So yoga is, is phenomenal. And I've never taken a yoga class in my life until last year I took it with Casey. And it was awesome. Okay. Kicked my butt. But yoga is, is, is freedom of movements, though. It's like Tai Chi. You know, Tai Chi, you could move, gently move. You don't have to ever take a Tai Chi class in your life. It's just moving and allowing nature to take its course. Don't think about stuff. Erase your mental. Erase your mind. Don't think about anything. Many of us have not mastered the art of blocking out things out of our life. I could block things out. I can stay here and meditate. I could meditate now while I'm talking to you. It doesn't have to be lights off or candles lit or incense burning or music playing. You can meditate deep within yourself. You can connect to yourself. Does anyone here meditate? One person. That's good. Has anyone ever thought about meditating? Good. So what's stopping you from doing it? Priorities? Excuses? Yeah. What's stopping you from doing it? Yeah. Right. See? That's the best excuse in the world. That means you could do it tonight. So meditation really is great because we don't spend enough time getting to know ourselves. You don't know who you are. Your kids know who you are. They know you as mom and dad, and your spouse knows who you are. Your bosses know who you are. Your workers know who you are. But you don't know who you are. Many of us do not spend enough time to get to know who we are. Who am I? Who am I? I asked myself that. Came up with a perfect answer. I am Donovan Green, and I inspire people to inspire people. That's who I am. And I live by that. I would never change that, ever. Now, who are you? Is there anyone I want to share who they are? I just shared who I am. No one wants to share it. That means that you're shy and you don't know who you are. Because if you know who you are, you will have no problem getting up and saying, I am X, Y, and Z. 
You don't got to get up now. You go home, you look in that mirror. Who am I? Don't tell me what you do for a living. Don't tell me, really, just I don't care about your name, really. I want to know who you are. What is your purpose? What purpose do you serve here? If you had one chance and you stepped up on this podium, you came on the stage, and I had a machete, and I was like, I'm going to chop your, your arms off. Tell me who you are. Would you keep your arm? Would I end up chopping your arm off because you couldn't answer the question? Or would you keep your arms? Salud. Bless you. Any other questions? And, and does that come through meditation? That comes through living. Meditation is living. Meditation is being present. It's breathing. That's what meditation is. You can do it while you're waiting at a light. You can do it while you're waiting for the train. You can do it while you're watching TV, doing commercial. It's just living and embracing your life for that moment. It could be for the second. It could be for the hour. It's up to you and your length of time. You don't have to use it as a prayer. People think meditation is a prayer. It's not a prayer. It's different things. Praying is different than meditating. Totally different. Praying, you're praying to your, you know, whatever your beliefs are. Meditation, you're focusing on yourself. You're blocking out everything out of the world. All the problems is gone. You're not thinking about that. It's only you. And if you're the problem, you will begin to realize that you're the problem. And you need to fix that problem. Some people fix it the wrong way. Some people jump off the bridge. Some people go to alcohol. Some people go to drugs. Some people go to food. Some people go to sex. They go to different things. But you want to find that positive way to fix the problem. You had a question. I'm sorry. Yeah, you was raising your hand before. Oh, um, I was going to ask you about how much water um, you, you know, typically per day? tell people to drink per day. What I do, they have a lot of different formulas. My favorite formula is take your weight, divide it by half, and have that many water ounces. So if somebody's 150 pounds, do at least 75 ounces of water. Okay. Like I do a gallon a day because I'm always working. I'm always moving constantly. So I like to drink the water. Uh, I hate water. I can't stand water. I hate water, hate vegetables, but I eat the vegetables and drink it, the vegetables, and drink the water because I know how healthy it is for me. But since I was a kid, I couldn't stand water. I can't stand it. But I still do it. When you were a kid, did you have, like, did you have like, confidence to just totally be yourself? Yeah. And what you see today, is that even yeah. as a young person? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you see is what you get. Yep. So if there's a problem I had to run, I was running. I don't care what they say. Well, do you a punk? I'm a punk, but I'm alive. Thank you. <laughs> Got no time for, for faking anything. You know why? Because there's always somebody in the audience or a group that can see who you are. Like, he's an analyzer. He hasn't moved from that spot yet. Look at him the whole time. My uncle was just like that. He would sit there the whole time and listen and take notes. And he could break you down in a couple of seconds. And I love that. Be yourself. Be yourself. I'm up here talking to you. I'm not the best speaker on the planet. I don't know English. I don't know English. I don't know what, what proper English or proper grammar is. I'm myself. I'm not trying to be perfect. It's either you accept me for who I am, or you move on to the next person. It's just life. It's life. That's why you have friends, and you have friends. Mm -hmm. You got friends, and you got friends. And then you have family. Mm -hmm. My mom? Oh, my mom. I love my mother. My mother was an was a excellent role model. My mother and I are the same person. Yeah, we're just alike. My mom is crazy. I'm crazy. She has problems. I have problems. She laughs. I laugh. It's, it's great. It's great. The thing about it is um, you surround yourself around good people, like I said in the beginning. You do the good things, you get the good things. You do bad things, you get the bad things. So my financial situation at one point was horrible. It was I was going through so much. I was spending so much money on my gym that I, the money that I was making was going right back to the gym. And I still felt good doing it, but it was a struggle. And then I came home, and I saw an eviction letter from my landlord because I owed rent. That was my wake-up call. And I said to my wife and my kids, we're out of here. Let's toss the coin. <laughs> Down south or Connecticut? I said, please, God, let the landlord head Connecticut, please. Oof. Toss the coin, Connecticut. 
And I told myself, I said, when I come to Connecticut, the first thing I want to do is I want to connect with successful people, financially successful people. I want to know what it feels like to be in that surroundings, in that circle. Because I was around broke people. If you hang around broke people, you're going to be broke. That's the reality behind it. So I met Dave Koch. I met a bunch of other people. We became like brothers. And I started noticing a lot of things happening in my life, too. My attitude, everything began to shine a little bit more. Because these were people that could help me. Help me to push and get my message out there. You see? You surround yourself around certain things, you get certain things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and never settle. I mean, never settle either. I don't settle for anything. I don't settle for anything. This book, this book took me four and a half years to get out. Four and a half years. And there are, there's so much material that I have that that's going to go on book number two. Tons of material. And, and the reason why it took me so long was the fact that I just believed in myself. Right? And I just want to thank everyone, because I know the time is, uh, we're closing in, what, five minutes? I want to thank everyone for listening to what I had to say. I hope you did learn something. I hope you got to know Donovan Green, who I am. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. And my, my going out thing is, life is what you make it, OK? Life is what you make it. Make it a good one. Thank you, everyone.